You are the voice of reason in this godforsaken world. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> After four bad marriages, you're a bitter, rich, little troll. The only reason to get married, I think, is to be a father and to have a family. If you don't want to have a family, I don't think marriage is any place for you. Money is very important. Yes, we love money. We all want that, and we all want a guy with money. But we really want to know that the guy can F our brains up. I listen to you every single day. I call you Don Tom. Like, Don and Mexican is like a badass. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you are to me, man. You're my hero. I can't thank you enough. You've changed my life. Seriously, I, I'm, you know, saving so much money. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable how much money you spend on these women. And you're still getting late. And I'm still getting late. And the best part about it is, you're right, you don't have to tell them what they want to hear. There's lots of opportunities to deduct your car payment. I personally believe short-term leases is a great way to go. Get in and out of the car in a couple of years. I do that with women. <laughs> Short-term leases. I like. I always like driving a new vehicle. Put a, put right. a few miles on it and yeah. ride over a few speed bumps. Little excess mileage. Turn it back into the dealer. You know why you're so degraded? Is because you got that fork in your mouth, dear. You got to take the fork out of your mouth. No fork out of my mouth. Yeah. I love to eat. I'm heavy. I'm sure I'm you on do. My way to go eat now. Yes, I don't care. I want a black Angus, red lobster. Red lobster, Long boy. Set. Nothing but the best for you, huh? Exactly, exactly. Oh, yes. And another right. thing. The home of K-R-A-B-B. Great women. Crap. You know, folks, we've got a presidential election this year. And the top story on headline news was Britney Spears is on lockdown. <laughs> We're all going to hell. We're all going. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be flames licking your ass. Dr. Phil is a whore in disguise. That makes him like a media wife. <laughs> If you want the woman to sleep with you and you're not so confident in that area or that department of yourself, who cares? Make her believe that you are God's gift to the vagina. And I guarantee you, whether you have money or not, she will give it up. Like I say, keep it cheap, be like Walmart. Get more, <laughs> pay less, brother. <laughs> <laughs> You don't like men who want, who want sex? I don't get it. No, I just don't understand that. Like, you guys talk about women like they're just so, like, degraded and, like... Degraded? Like, yes. We talk about women like they're degraded. Yes. A fat girl's kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. Ben on the Tom Likas show. Hello. It'll be about a 70-second delay before you realize he's on the air. We'll just sit here and wait. He's waiting to hear his name on the air. And here it comes. I was called before. All right, we'll just sit here and wait. Dan on the Tom Likish. Hello? Why, yes. Well, what's going on there, Tom? Not much, Ben. Let me ask you a question, Ben. Did Dean tell you to turn the radio off? Yeah, that's my thought on that one. Turn on right now. Turn on. Yeah, you just said I can wait to hear my name. You know what? I thought we were talking about women being idiots. Now I feel like an idiot. Oh. <laughs> From a place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Wow, you're bad. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8. Six, six. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Friday. Anything goes. Anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. 
long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Just call 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. This is Francisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, uh, Tom. This is a... Um, I have a problem. I've been listening to you for uh, a couple months now. Um, I've been... Uh, I did the mistake of uh, getting married a little over a year ago. And um, I know what I need to do. I need to get out of the situation. And what's the best thing I can do so um, so I won't get the emotionally part? Like, uh, what's, what's the best way to not What's get- emotional about it? Well, I'm, you've, said, you've said that you've been married before. I have, um, and divorced, yes. And, I mean, I know what I need to do. It's, uh, I mean, my case is I got married too soon, um, did something stupid, just got married, and I want to get out of it. Uh, why'd, you get mar- why, why, why'd you get married? Stupidity and naive, being too naive, and, um, and I want to get out of it. I mean, I've been listening to your show, and it's been a real eye-opener, and I want to get out of it. And, but I know what I need to do. I mean, uh, I've heard your show. And I see here on the screen what you didn't tell us. You married a single mother. Yes. Oh, yes. my. What made you do that? Um, Like I said, I was naive, uh, too young, much too young. And, uh, I mean, I haven't, I haven't been stupid enough to uh, adopt, fortunately. Has she tried and to get I, you to do that? No, 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 no. Even if she tried, um, uh, that's a no-go. And, um... Well, like I said, you've said that you've been married before, and I know what I need to do, but I know that I'm still going to, um, I mean, it's still going to hurt regardless, you know, pride, and, and I know it's, it's, it's going to hurt a bit, it's going to sting, but I want to know what, what you did or what your advice is. To, I, uh, I, I got a divorce as quickly as possible, and then I went and effed anything that moved. Hot, not hot. Fat, thin, right. young, old, anybody that would have me. So just your advice is just do it and... And bang your way out of it. Sounds good, Tom. But yeah, Tom. act as quickly as possible. Uh, you don't want to get uh, caught up for any more alimony than you have to. Right. And um, really, it's, it's, only, it's like I've been married for like six months because I, as soon as I got, mar- I got married, I went on deployment. And um, it's I've been living with her for about six months or so, and I mean, like I said, I've been listening to your show for a couple months, and yeah, I'm I'm not happy, I'm not happy. This is not what I want for myself. And and, and what, what exactly has happened to, to make you unhappy? Has she done well, or not done anything? It's uh, it's a little, it's it's a combination of both. Uh, uh, in the doing department, she's been uh, nagging, getting a little too comfortable, a little too uh. uh I mean, she's she's starting to get fat, and the, the in the not doing department. I mean, she's not. I, I I don't know. I just don't think she's a. She doesn't cook, you know. She doesn't. Uh, the sex has uh, been slowing down since. Uh, since. Were you a listener before you months? got married? Excuse me. Were you a listener before no, you I got wasn't. married? Okay. I I wouldn't be married if I was. I'm checking. And, um, well, so your advice is just bang my way out of it, huh? That's what I did. Well, now I know what I need to do. You know, and, you uh, learned. Hang on a second. Joe, what did you want to say to Francisco? Um, first of all, I don't think he is going to do anything about it. So I can tell, tell by his voice, sounds like a little puss to me. <laughs> first of all. Second of all. I don't know what he was thinking marrying a single mom, let alone get married, period. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I mean, I was, uh, I'm 21 now, and now, like, my options have been, why, I mean, they're, they're so much more than when I was just 20. I couldn't go out with, the, with, with my friends. I couldn't do a lot of things. Now that I can, it's like, you know, I'm not because I'm married and I'm just stuck at home. Um, well, why, why don't you just go out anyways? To, to save myself the nagging, which is, you know, and... Well, lately, I've, I've stand up for yourself and stop being so whipped. 
no, no, that, that's what I've been doing. I've been more of a, I've been more of a jerk, and you know, she's been uh, giving me crap about it. But I mean, like I said, I've been listening to the show a lot lately, and I just, I, I've been, I've been taking Tom's advice. I've just been myself, which is, I'm, I mean, I'm a jerk naturally, and I get crap for it. But hey, whatever, you know. I, I've been feeling better about myself lately, and I think uh, just cutting it off, you know, would would be the best uh, thing first, to do. First, don't sound like very much of a jerk to me. You sound like a little nice guy who just gets pushed around every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, what, what, if you're not even going to say anything back to that, I'm just punking you on the air right now. No, oh, I mean, obviously if, you are. Uh, yeah, I know I'm right. No, I, I didn't say you were right. I mean, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to waste my time with you. You're not going to waste your time with me. All right. No, well, I, I mean, go back to your life. And, uh, no, look, I, I, you're 21 I, years like old. I said, I know what why I'm going to do. Why would you get married before you're 21, regardless? You can't even go to a bar and you're getting married. Like I said, I was stupid. I know that now. You know, a year you know, ago. <laughs> What's that? A year ago. This was a year ago, right? Yeah. Now was. you're now you're mature, but a year ago you were immature. I didn't say I wasn't mature. I was naive. I didn't know what. Well, I didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, I would say that it would be, be a result of immaturity. Well, yeah. I mean. Uh, Lack of experience as well, I would say. That's part of immaturity. But uh, I, mean, I mean, you I don't mature think... in a vacuum. Maturity uh, is partly a function of experience. True. Without experience, people shouldn't be getting married. You're right, Tom. So, like I said, hey, I mean, I know what I need to do. I just wanted... Uh, the best advice on on uh, the best way out of it. Right? And I say F your way out of it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. All those guys out there that are that are knocking these frogs up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that, you know, these girls don't love you. These girls love the wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. I'm 1 800 5 800 Tom. Speaking of Hollywood, Johnny Grant died. You know who Johnny Grant was? If you've ever been to Hollywood and Highland, the shopping mall, there's a little street there called Johnny Grant Way. Johnny Grant fancied himself the honorary mayor of Hollywood. And uh, I think Johnny Grant went to his grave believing that Hollywood was a city. I mean, you can only have a mayor if you're actually a city, right? Hopefully nobody told him before his death that Hollywood hasn't been a city since the turn of the 20th century. That's what killed him. <laughs> That's what killed Did somebody tell him? That's what happened. Somebody went, what are you, mayor of what? This isn't a city. Are you insane? Somebody probably called his room at the Hollywood Roosevelt on the 14th floor. said, Johnny, I got to tell you something. Hollywood is not a city. You're not the mayor of anything. And that was it. <laughs> All these years, he thought he was getting reelected by a landslide. <laughs> Somebody was telling him he was the mayor of Hollywood. That's great. Who's going to be the next mayor of Hollywood? Gary says it should be me. I live in Hollywood. I work in Hollywood. I can't say where I work, but that, trust me, I'm in Hollywood at one of the many hundreds of movie studios here. Uh, I, I, we should campaign for that. That was at Johnny Grant's deathbed. He threw all his support to me. Those were his dying words. <laughs> oh, my God. Johnny Grant. Johnny Grant was involved in that Walk of Fame. You had to kiss his butt if you want. I, that's why I don't have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I refuse to uh, congratulate Johnny Grant for being the mayor of Hollywood. 
That's why Ryan Seacrest has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's why Mark and Brian have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's why Rick Dees has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But I don't. I refuse to submit to Johnny Grant as one of his constituents. So you're the mayor of what? It's not even a city. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't live in Southern California, I couldn't make this up. The honorary mayor of Hollywood. By the way, he's been the honorary mayor of Hollywood since the days when Hollywood Boulevard was nothing but teenage runaways and hookers, porn shops. And to be in the mayor of that. So, anyway. And you know, when there's a, there's a political consultant out there who can help me get elected the new honorary mayor of Hollywood. I'm ready to take this thing all the way. There'll be a new sheriff in town. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stop Jimmy Kimmel from stopping up Hollywood Boulevard with all those stupid live acts he puts out in the street. Stopping up traffic. It's going to be number one on my list. Exactly. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Marcia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I've been waiting forever to tell you exactly why you don't like larger women. You've been waiting forever to tell me. Yes. Okay, so to li use a little bit of the... Uh, you, you mean know, fat what? chicks. Yeah, fat chicks. I'm a fat chick, but I'm a lovely fat chick. So. Okay. Really? So How can you tell a lovely fat chick from just a fat chick? Because when I see older white guys in the grocery store, in the mall, with their skinny blonde chicks, they're always looking at my big black butt. Yeah, but what, what makes you think they want your big black butt? Okay, so, not to get off topic, it's a fact that black men have larger penises than white men, right? Uh, I don't know that that's a fact. Gotten reports from the front. Okay. Well, I'm letting you know that it's a fact black guys have bigger penises. You've said this guys. twice. How many times do you plan to say this? Okay. You need a smaller woman to make your smaller penis feel uh, more powerful. Oh, that must be what it is. It is. Because when you're hitting it, you're not hitting the bottom of somebody. You don't know what I'm hitting. I know that you're not hitting the bottom. You don't know what I'm hitting or how, what I have. Uh, you have a 10 inch. How big is your penis? Yeah, dear, again, we're not getting into a conversation like this because the Federal Communications Commission will not allow it. No, the Federal Communications I Darling, I'm not going to let you take me down with you, down to that path of unemployment where you live, okay? I'm not going to let you do it. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to debate with you what the federal government will allow on the air and what it won't, okay? Not going to do it. All I'm going to tell you is the conversation you would like to have the federal government has a problem with you having on the air. Not me. My credentials are intact. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hey. Hey. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hey. Hey, Tom. So, uh... Um, hey. Can you hear me? Hey. Tom. Hey. <laughs> Tom, I need your advice, man. Yes. Okay. So, I talked to you about a month ago, man. And I talked to you about a month ago when I was talking to this girl. When did you talk uh, to me? About a month ago. About a month ago. Yeah, and you, hey. you, you told me that I should, uh, I should uh, basically run kind of a Hail Mary, but not in that term. Um... You know, I told you I had been out with her twice, and we were going to go out the third time, and I was going to try and seal the deal the third time. But uh, at that point, she had a boyfriend. So what she did, though, she told me a couple days later that she had broken up with her boyfriend, and then we were going to go out, but we never did. You still with me? I'm here. Okay. So we went. So we, we never went out, right? Then she she called me back like a week later and told me that she got back with her boyfriend, and I was like, all right, well, you know, whatever, that's see you later, bye, I'm done with you. And I hadn't talked to her in, I don't know, probably like two or three weeks since then. 
Then yesterday she calls me and she tells me, hey, um, I'm a, she tells me that her boyfriend had proposed and like he had proposed without a ring or whatnot. And she was all upset and she was pissed off and she had told him no and whatnot. And now she's back to calling me. So I was telling Dean, I, I don't know what I'm, what I'm supposed to do here. I mean, whether I'm supposed to be hit it when you can or... hit it. Don't worry about it. So you think I should? I but don't be falling in love with it, for God's sake! Oh man, no, I can't. I can't take this serious at all. Hit it, and then when the window of opportunity closes, move on. Okay, well that's understandable. But do I stick around for the minute to try and hit it, or I mean, I I have the feeling you're not sticking around. around. You're either hitting it or you're not hitting it. Well, I have a feeling that if I keep like you know trying to stay around and try and hit it, that she's. But if you try, if you make it sound like you're falling in love with her, or it's a relationship, or you're her other boyfriend, or something like that, it's only going to be a disaster. Yeah, I, I understand you completely. And I can hear that's where you're heading. No, I'm not headed there at all. Don't be heading I, there. I, I tell everybody, I'm just in it to hit it and quit it. So, I think even she knows that. So. And what are you waiting for? Nothing because you're, because this window of opportunity is going to close. He will ultimately produce a ring. You think so? Yep. Uh, he's an idiot, too. So I, I guess, you know, she can go ahead and keep with that. So. Hey, Tom, can you uh, take me out ghetto style and then blow me up? <laughs> ghetto style. Here you go. Biatch. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chantel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to make a quick comment about the female caller who called one call prior to this guy. And you made a quick comment about her um, saying that you don't want to be on unemployment where she is um, because you can't say that because of your job. Of the discussion she was talking about, I wonder why you said that. And if that was a white female caller, would you have said the same thing? Uh, it had nothing to do with her color. It had to do with her fatness and the fact that she clearly didn't understand that I was trying to protect my employment here. But what does that have to do with her being unemployed? Because I think somebody... Is it because she's that, being, There are plenty of educated people who do not know how to survive in the work world and do not understand uh, corporate America. Okay. And I'm trying to explain to her that the federal government will not allow me to have the kind of conversation she wants to have on the air. And she clearly was either intentionally ignoring what I was saying or clearly is not capable of understanding uh, that, that this is the reality. Well, and I understand that, but I understand well, the topic that she was talking about, I, you can call women bitches and everything else, but you can't talk about... I, tell you, I, I don't make these decisions. Okay. I don't all make right. them. I listen to you all the time, and I'm actually a black woman myself, and uh -huh. I heard, heard that one comment that you said. What I said to her had nothing guard. to do with her race. It had to do with her size and her attitude. Okay. All right. Tom, by the way, well, you, you never. By the way, you never saw her size. Do you know what her size was? No, I'm sure she wasn't that big. Do you want to know? What? Yes. Six seven two fifty five. Oh, six two two fifty. Six two two fifty five. Wow. Six two two fifty five. Did Dean get all that information? <laughs> yes, he did. Six two well, two. All I'd say for you, Tom, is oh, D Dean corrected me. Six two two seventy five. And you'll be really, really happy, darling. Here. I've I've had black women, and I would have one gladly again. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'm very. Yeah. I was very pleased. Keep in mind, I grew up in a neighborhood that was black and Hispanic, and okay. uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you are a regular listener to this program. But my yes, first exposure to, all right, then you know, do you remember my first exposure to anything remotely pornographic? No. My Uncle Ray, who worked for the dead letter office at the post office, brought me copies of the National Geographic. Oh, I remember you saying that, and you saw the cover of a woman, like, in um, our an article about a woman. Was it in Africa or somewhere? Oh, it was all women of color from various places. You know, yeah. Fiji, Africa, whatever. All naked. Okay, well, I just wanted to defend that woman, and but I'm glad to know that it was. So some guys use that. the Sears catalog bra section. <laughs> I use the National Geographic. That's good. That the Mormon should be like that. Well, that's right. That's right. <laughs> all types of beauties. That was the first erotica I was exposed to. Great. <laughs> Women running around, running around in the rainforest, wearing very little clothing. Wow. And well, with just amazing nipples. <laughs> well, in that note, can you take me out African tribal style then? You know I can, dear. Here you go. Baninge, 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 solo penza. Baninge, 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 solo penza.
Tom. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So, for you, you only get from women you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, oh my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. And if it goes here... Ronnie, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, um, how you doing, buddy? Doing okay. Okay, I have I have a, a terrible situation that I'm going through right now. Um, I've been with this girl maybe for about, i say like eight months. Um, we met through a, a mutual friend, and um, what kind of happened, like a friend introduced us, and like, a, may I say maybe like a month after she introduced us, she passed away. So it kind of brought me and the girl like close instantly. Now, me and this girl have been dating. Everything's been cool. But now I have a situation where she, where she got pregnant. And, like, everything has changed. And, like, my whole situation is just hell now. Like, I can't get along with the girl. We're constantly arguing. Now she got, like, her family involved. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how I should handle it. First of all, why did you let this happen? Uh, honestly, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I mean, I don't know. I have, I have the girl, like, since I've been with her, she looked out for me, like, a whole a whole lot. She really helped me out. So that means you and need to have a baby. Happened. Not necessarily. It wasn't planned. No, you know, but it was planned because you didn't use a condom. True. That's a plan. True. Why'd you do that? Uh, honestly, I can't tell you. Well, I insist on an answer. I mean, I guess, well, I knew eventually I wanted kids and, like... I, Event, I is today eventually? Let me look at the calendar. <laughs> no, it looks like Friday. At, at the time, I felt like, I mean, she was the right person. What did you know? What was that? What did you know? Uh, not enough. Right. So, and, and why couldn't you wait until you were married? I don't know. I honestly, I honestly don't know. Why don't you know? What is your life we're talking about here? I'm seeing that now. I mean, I don't know. At the time, I, I, I thought that I was ready. Like, I don't, I don't even know. I have no justification for what I've done because I know better. Like, I, I've been listening to your show maybe for like a couple of months, and everything you say. I mean, you taught me a lot, but a lot of things that you say, I already knew. So I really don't know how I let myself fall in. And I'm not trying to punish you here. I'm, I'm making you think, and I'm making you, you know, respond uh, based on, let's face it, uh, I, I, I want you to tell me why you did these things so that other people don't make these mistakes and so that you don't do that again. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I thought I loved it, girl. I thought everything would work out perfectly because I... I kind yeah, of, but if it, then why weren't you married to her? Well, because I wasn't ready for the marriage. Well, if you weren't ready for the marriage, you're not ready for a baby. See, if you're not ready exactly. for marriage, you have no reason to believe that something is is that that like you're ready to have a baby with this person. I don't know. Do you understand the, whole, the difference? Yeah, I understand. I think the whole thing was. I I, I really don't know. I mean. Like I said, we met through this friend. My friend passed away. Like it was a, it was a tragedy. What happened? Not just my friend passed away. Her whole family died in a car accident. So, I mean, I was like really there for her, and I was a strong one for her because I lost my mother. So, I mean, my friend passing away it hurt me, but I was able to handle it a whole lot better than she was. And it like just, I mean, I don't know. Everything happened so fast, and I honestly didn't expect this to happen. I mean, I'm not. I'm what do you mean you didn't I'm, expect it I'm, to happen? What do you I think mean, happens not, when you have sex not, without a condom? I know. I'm not upset about about the baby part. I mean, but I'm tripping off of how she's acting. Like, it's it's, it's scaring me. It's, it's only like eight weeks, and I don't even know what to look forward to. Well, I think you have a pretty good preview right there. Oh. And, um... Like, the thing is, like, she, she's Polynesian, so, like, their whole culture is different. And I know she hasn't even told her parents yet. 
So, and I know when she tells her parents, like, I don't know if marriage is going to become an issue, but, I mean, as of right now, I'm not even trying to go that route yet. Don't you think you should have gone that route first? And if you were not ready to go that route, you shouldn't have had a baby? Definitely. So why didn't you act accordingly? I, honestly, I can't give you an answer for that. <laughs> so you do things without thinking about the consequences, without looking to the future, right? I did this thing without doing that. Who knows what other things you're doing? Now, I'll say this has to be the worst. And uh, let me just ask you, just uh, along these same lines, how about your credit rating? How about uh, your bills? Uh, I'm in a situation right now where I'm trying to get everything where I feel it needs to be. So, in other words, like, bad credit? I mean, I don't have, like, real bad credit. It's all things that I can pay off, but... I mean, I, I was just, like, living on my own at the time I was going to school, and I was put in situations where I, was, I had to make a decision. So you were going to school? Yeah. So what made you think you were ready to have a baby if you were going to school? I, I was being stupid. Right. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Shouldn't you have finished school first? Definitely. Did you try to get her to have an abortion? No. Uh, I mean, it was brought up, but, I mean, in the beginning, like, she was the one mainly saying that she wanted to have the abortion. Why didn't you say yes? Oh, I did say it. And then what but happened? Then, as days went on, I guess she spoke to whoever she spoke to. She started talking to friends. and, and When they say yes, you got to start the engine up right then. you got to drive them right over to the clinic. Oh, yeah, like the next day, the first day, I didn't, like, really say nothing about the abortion when she told me. But the next day, like, I was enforcing nothing because I was enforcing it so much that made her kind of, like, sit back and change her mind. And then I know she started talking to a couple of friends of hers who don't have kids, and they told her to keep the baby. And now, I mean, this is what's going on. Ugh. All right. So your question is what? I mean, how do you feel I should handle this situation? I mean, I know it's already too late for abortion. Don't get married. Out of the deal. She's like, Don't Dude. get married now. Okay. Because if you do, and it doesn't work out, you'll be paying child support plus alimony. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I hear you. That means no marriage. I've been at work. I can't even, I can't even, like, it's pissing me off because now it's affecting the other things that I got going on. Like, I'm at work, and I fell behind a little bit on work today because I'm thinking about what's going on. Well, get used to this idea. That's what's going to happen. You're having a baby. You're not going to get married. If she insists on marriage, you wave goodbye. So do you recommend that I stay with her, or, or what do you recommend as far as that? Are you living with her? No, 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 no. No, I, You know, you can't knock her up anymore, so if there's sex there and you want to continue to take advantage of it, go right ahead. No marriage, no moving in. Because the thing is, like, I don't know, I have a lot of respect for her parents and everything, and another thing that I like, like, they accept me in. That's kind of hard, like, when you're dealing with a female for their family to accept you. And, like, I have, like, I have a lot of respect for her, her, her both of her parents, so I don't want to just, all right, I got her paid and just run away from the situation. Hey, but you, again, you'll pay what you're legally required to pay, but that doesn't mean you have to get married or yeah, move in. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I feel. Like I'm not I'm not going to get rushed into that and for one. I mean, that's not a good way to get married anyway cuz I'm I'm not doing it because like I want to do it. I'm doing it because of the situation we're in and that's not good. Right? It's no way that it will work. All right. So you know what not to do and what to do. All right. 
Okay. All right. Um, I want to tell you, too, also, I, 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 like, really enjoy your show. I've been listening, like I said, for a couple of months, and you're doing a good job. Thank you, Ronnie. Yeah. I mean, I really appreciate it. There's somebody speaking up for the man out there. Somebody has to do it. Yeah, because we have too many guys that are just, like, soft and, and, and are scared to stand up to women. I know. Oh. And what they don't know is that everything that you think women like or everything they tell you that they like, they pretty much like the opposite. If they tell you they want a good man, they really want a man. They treat them like dirt. And that's who they come to time and time again. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like all these women, the women they call in and talk about you and talk down upon you, you're touching them in some kind of way, or else they wouldn't even bother to listen to your show. You're right. So that's telling you all the ladies that's calling in, they actually like what you're talking about. You're catching their interest. If they wasn't interested, they wouldn't even bother. Even when they say they hate it, you know they love it. Good luck, Ronnie. Thanks. Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Oh, wow. D-Man, huh? What's going on, Tom? A little radio show, huh? Do a little radio show here. Okay. Good deal, man. Well, check this out. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. You have to watch your mouth. This is a radio station. You're right. And you can't speak like that on the radio. Got it. Got it. Well... I've been living with this chick for, I don't know, a couple of years now, on and off. We have business together. We work together. It's our own business. Uh, essentially, yeah, she's wanted to get married, etc., and it just isn't really the time to do all that kind of stuff. A buddy of mine sends me a link to a, a singles website. Come to find out, my girlfriend is on a, a singles website. Really? I swear to God. Which one? High Singles, H-Y-E, Armenian. Is that so? It is so. It's unbelievable, Tom. How did he find it? I, I, you know what? I really don't know. He gave me he gave me a, a, a link to it. I checked it out. She's right there. Unbelievable. So what does it say on the profile? Tom, you know, I, I can shoot you a link. It, it basically says she wants an Armenian guy. See, I'm not Armenian, so hey, I, that's just not going to work out. Uh huh. I can't. I can't wake up tomorrow and be Armenian. That's right. Yeah. So uh, away from everything else. It's just the right. back hair removal alone would be a uh, good part of your day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that would cost a penny. Just just the same. <laughs> Yeah, it's so it's a wrap, Tom. Got to extra out. The funny thing is, she didn't even know why I told her to move until literally I got on the phone with Dean. Is that so? Yeah, she came home. I said, "Hey, you got to pack up. You got to split. You got to go, and you got to go tomorrow." And uh, you know, she gets into why and why and what and why and, and you told her why. No, I didn't. I told Dean why while she was standing here and. I'm pretty sure her jaw dropped. In. So where is she now? She's right here. Oh, great. Two feet away from me. Arms crossed, oh. eyes piercing. Oh, wait a minute. Tell you, hold on. Let's get her on the phone after the break here. <laughs> I want to talk to her. You got it. Hold on. Dean will get all the details. Oh, yeah, we got to talk to her and find out what that's all about. Well, you're not going to tune out now, are you? Hell. I want to stay here in the studio and do one more hour just so I can find out what happened. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.